Hey everyone, welcome to an episode in the React Foundation series. So this is the third part in the design language series. Uh, in this episode, I'm going to be showing you guys how to select fonts, uh, you know, so that we can make it look good in our app. Uh, so right now we're just using the Sans Sans Serif, the Helvetica that just comes with pure CSS. So uh, what that means is I'm going to show you guys how to write global styles as well in your application that will, you know, you'll need to kind of like apply globally everywhere. Um, so far with CSS modules, we have been using kind of like the, you know, the scoped version, like where it's only like styling components based, like based on the components. Uh, we also now going to do the global styles. Uh, I try to reduce the amount of global styles I need, but sometimes you do need them. Like for example, in this instance, like we need to do the fonts. Uh, so we, what, usually what I do is I just go to Google fonts, uh, Google web fonts, and they have a ton of great font over there. Uh, and Google have done a really, really great job at making this uh, very easy to use. Um, so there's like, usually I'll go for the sans serif fonts. Uh, so I'll just kind of like deselect all the other stuff. And uh, generally I feel that um, the sans serif fonts kind of work really well in a application. Um, so uh, I'll show you guys, I'll talk to you guys about some of the popular fonts. Um, like, so there's Roboto, which is very famous. Uh, a lot of apps use that, a lot of sites use that. Um, Open Sans, uh, Lato, uh, these are all really, really great fonts. Uh, Roboto Condense, if you're into that condensed stuff. Um, there's also um, Montes, I don't know how to read that. Uh, Railway is another popular one. So uh, any one of these uh, would be okay. Uh, Ubuntu is another popular one. Droid Sans, another popular one. Uh, so we're just going to go with the the basic, uh, the idea is to just pick one and then basically, um, you know, to use it in our app. Uh, so let's go with Roboto. So I'm going to click that. I'm going to add. And then basically I'm going to go here. And basically you, what you get is this link over here, this link tag. So I'm going to show you first how to use this in your app. So you'll see here it says that you need to set the font family to Roboto Sans Serif. Um, so I'm going to copy that and I'm going to show you like, you know, just the current development way. And then when we go into production, I'll show you the production way of using links like this in a React app. All right. So I'm going to copy that. I'm going to head over into here and you will notice that we have, um, kind of like a basic, um, app here, uh, a basic, uh, template here. Um, and basically what we can just do is just use it in our HTML file. Let me just check webpack config for good measure. All right. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it is using index.html. Um, and so basically we'll, for now, um, we will paste it into here like that. Uh, and then if I go and do a reload in my application over here, so I do a reload real quick and I look at the inspect, um, we should be able in our head, see the font that we just pasted in. Uh, now this right here, uh, this index on HTML is going to change. So later on, we need to do a lot more complex things and just like including the script tag like this, like later on, we're going to go into code splitting and you know, all this stuff that Webpack has. And, uh, and so we need to, you know, be able to use a template, uh, like an EJS file. So we'll go into that a little bit later. Um, so, so for now, I mean, we put the font in, it's going to work just fine. This is design language. So let's just focus on that. All right. So now what we need to do is we need to create a global style that we can use. Um, so here we included the pure CSS. So what we can do is I'm going to create a new folder here called styles. And here I'm going to call it, uh, init dot sass like that and then basically what i really want to do is uh, i want to use this in it um styles in it in index so i'm going to do import um styles in it dot sass like that so basically here is where we're going to use our global overrides for all the stuff that we're doing so like for example in here i can do um something like global and then body and basically here um, we can add the font. So font family Roboto Sans Serif like that. And basically now if I go ahead and do a reload, um, I think the font has changed. Yeah, it has. So you'll see that the font looks slightly different now on our page because we've overridden 
um, the the you know the 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 font, uh, and and it looks I think it looks quite a bit better. Um, so you know, feel free if you're not into the, this font, feel free to go to the Google Fonts, copy whatever um, whatever font you want, and throw it in, and then that's basically how you do global style. So yeah, uh, that pretty much wraps it up in terms of the font selection. Uh, let's see what else can we do here in this episode. Um, okay, so let's also um, style this input a little bit. Uh, I'm not too fond of the default style of the pure CSS. So since we're in the space of doing um, you know global um, global styling anyway, we can style the input like from pure CSS. Uh, so we can use this pure input uh, pure input uh, or just the input uh, you know, here. And then basically we can style it. Uh, let's see how um, Pure CSS is styling it. Uh huh. Okay, so all the styles are here. Pure form input. All right, so let's do a uh, pure form input. So something like that. And then basically what we can do is let's start with something basic like border radius like 0.1 EM. Like that. Did that work? Nope. I don't think that worked. So it's still border radius 4px here. So I, I really want to force that. So let's try important. There we go. So that worked. So 0 0.1 looks pretty good. I mean, it's not too soft. It's not too sharp. We can try 0 0.2 and see how that works. Uh, yeah, it works. Uh, so what we can also do, it kind of matches with the rounded corner of the, the box that we have here. And so this glow here also needs kind of like fit with our, um, with the rest of our color scheme that we have going with our gradient. So generally when it comes to color uh, stuff, I generally like to just pick a, like a, one of the shade over here and just kind of like run with that. Uh, the blue that they have here is kind of sort of works, but... Um, Maybe I'm just not too fond. Let's take a look at the Heroku stuff. The Heroku stuff, yeah, they're using purple. Um, let's try like a shade of blue over here. Um, so generally what I'll do is I'll just do like a snapshot over here and capture like a palette and then basically open it up in Photoshop and then basically use a, the color picker to kind of like arbitrarily just pick the color that works and then try it out like different variants. Um, so we'll do the same thing for the button as well. So I'm just going to do an open over here. Uh, open my screenshot up there on the desktop. And then basically just do like I and then pick a color. And yeah, something like that pretty much. Uh, another thing we need to do is set up the, the, the color. Uh, like a place where we can all like put all the colors in one place. Uh, so I'm going to put it in here. Uh, I'm going to scrap the flat UI. So I'm going to do colors.sass. Yeah. So here we're going to do the uh, uh, base, dark, blue. So I'll, I'll code it like with a variable. And then basically, if you remember correctly, we got this color from here. And the dark blue is this color over here, this shade over here. So I'm going to paste that in like that. So, and then we have the base, light, blue. Uh, and then basically, this is kind of like the light blue base that we have over here. So this kind of sets up like the file that we can use uh, in our application. So yeah, so this is kind of like the, the global stuff that we're going to use, we're going to share across our app. It's going to styles folder here. Uh, so what we need to do here is then we need to include this colors in our component that we're styling over here. Uh, so I'm going to go into components, new here. So I'm going to leave the flat UI for now. Uh, I'm going to import and we'll work towards uh, scrapping that. Uh, I, don't, I think I don't think we're using anything here. Uh, okay, so yeah, so we can remove the flat stuff, import, uh, and then we do a um, styles, colors, something like that. And then basically here we can change it to like base, light, blue, um, like that. Uh, and, and that should be okay. Let's give this a whirl and see how that works. Do a reload real quick. All right, seems to be some kind of error. Um, okay, so let's take a look at the Webpack config. Uh, I believe that we need, yeah, so, oh, my bad. So here we just need to add a um, 
the config app. So we're gonna use the styles from here. So now we have styles.colors. Uh, so this is our app. Uh, so what we can do is we need to um, change this back to styles slash colors. Uh, and then basically now we can do a reload and see what happens. Ah, so once we uh, configure the Webpack to look at the app folder, we need to do yarn start again. And then basically that will, that should take care of our issue with the colors. Okay, so now we have the issue where, you know, we're using, um, you know, the color, the flat green color over here. So now we can change this back to base bl light blue and do a reload real quick. And there we go. So th even that looks uh, better. Uh, you know, it looks good. Uh, we can we can probably survive with that. Um, so now things seem to be a little bit more consistent. We don't have that green anymore. Um, I'm not too sure about the way that this color uh, gradient works when the button hovers. So we'll worry about that later. Um, so yeah, I you know, and uh, I would really like for this to be really dark. Um, this hover around the the you know the 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 input input box to be a lot darker. Uh, but you know now you guys are, are understand like how global styling works, how it all fits, and how you get the design language, how to start populating the styles directory, and how to config Webpack to look at different directories for styles. Um, so I think that's quite enough coverage uh, of content for this episode. Uh, with that, I'm going to wrap it up. So I want to make sure that you guys subscribe, like, and share our video if you found it useful. Uh, also become a member on our site. We appreciate your support. That's the only reason why we are able to keep everything going. Uh, with that, I'm going to wrap it up, and I'll see you guys in the next episode.